Just uh, turn to the person seated next to you and wish them a happy Sabbath. Just tell them, happy Sabbath to you. It's indeed a blessed Sabbath day. Exodus chapter 25, the theme of this building, emphasis day, is building up with God. Exodus chapter 25, I'm reading verse 1, 2, and 8. Exodus chapter 25. This is what the Bible says. Then the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they may bring an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart you shall take my offering i'll jump to verse 8 and let them make me a sanctuary that i may dwell among them. May God bless the reading of his word. What does the church say? Amen. Shall we bow our heads as we seek the Lord in prayer once again? Our Father in heaven, we all are gathered here for you and matters that relate to your word are never ever to be taken casually and so because this is just a privilege for us to receive your word allow me father to step aside and that your holy spirit speaks beginning with the preacher all the way to the pews come now and hover in this place dear holy spirit for this we pray in the name of jesus christ amen the agenda of uh, building, as I mentioned in the morning, especially the church or the sanctuary of God, is not man's agenda. Hallelujah, church. It's not new. It comes from as far back as ancient times, even in the Bible. And amazingly, Dear church, we find that God invites his people to participate or to ensure that his church or his temple is built. Isn't he the same God in the beginning who said, let there be light? And there was light. I truly believe that this sanctuary was going to be built even in a flash of lightning. He knew the design after all. He communicated it with Moses in the mountain during his 40 day and 40 night experience. But how come that God himself delegates this very important task to mortals such as human beings after all, these were sojourners and strangers. They were not employed. They had nowhere to earn an income. This was a desert. And yet God tells them, bring an offering. Beloved, sometimes God's propositions are difficult to understand, but yet they require that we pay very close attention. What do we say, church? You are talking to pilgrims. You are talking to people whose income is irregular. They do not have anything. By the way, they are just individuals transversing through the wilderness. But we find here God saying, Speak unto the children of God, the children of Israel, that let them bring to me an offering. And he puts a condition. And what is this condition? Collect from individuals only who give this offering how? Willingly. With their heart. 
And beloved, I was stumbling. I, I, I wanted to find out why did God put this injunction? Why did God put this condition? He knew that somehow there would be murmurers among them, but please bypass them and only collect this offering from those that were willing and those that are willing. And in very few circumstances does God give reasons for any particular pronouncement. Of course, in the book of Genesis, we find God putting a command that if, when you eat of this forbidden fruit, you shall surely what? Die. He never gave really details to this pronouncement. But here in verse 8, God gives a purpose for building this sanctuary. What was the purpose, church? That I may dwell not with them, but what? Uh, I did, I, well, I was too mathematical when I was at secondary school. My wife did very well in English, but I've learned quite a lot from her. But from my experience, she's taught me to pay a tick, a particular attention to words. There is a difference between dwelling with and dwelling among. Why did God say, let them build me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them? Beloved, in my study, I realized to say this was no ordinary pronouncement. God did not pronounce this because he was stranded, he needed a bit of help. But beloved, I see something much deeper than the pronouncement of this task. Twofold, number one, let them bring an offering willingly. And number two, that I may dwell with them. Number one, he gives a task, the task of building. But yet this task is coupled with purpose. Many at times when we talk about church building, we only emphasize on the task. Building chairpersons and elders in charge will talk about the building structure. They, they will talk about the aspects, the, 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 the geography of the building. But very little emphasis is given to the purpose for which the church should be part of the building project. So fellow church members, I, allow me to say this, that this pronouncement was very subtle, I may call it. It was hidden because from this, God was testing the children of God in three divine areas. This pronouncement of the building of the sanctuary was a test to God's people. We can sing, we can pray, we can promise all to Jesus I surrender. But Christianity or discipleship requires that we one by one be tested so that God can see the genuineness of our faith. If that is clear, say amen. Three areas of test. Remember, we say that God would have built this sanctuary within no time. He had the resources, he had the power, he had the means. He had everything that was required. But he delegated this task for testing his people. Number one, what was test number one? God wanted to test them. Uh, this test I call it the test of omnipotent value. Now, beloved, human beings are very difficult to understand because human beings believe, at least, that you cannot be part of anything that does not bring value to your well-being. There is a tendency among us as human beings to get involved in only that which we feel has a contribution somehow to the well-being of our lives. We will spend our time, we will spend our money, we will invest so much only on that which we feel has great value. So in this project, God wanted to test them whether to them he was of great value. Do they 
value me? Of what benefit am I to them if I am to dwell with them? Do they understand why I want to dwell among them? That was test number one. Will it bring excitement to them? How much do they understand me or of what value have, I, have they seen in me to warrant them to contribute willingly so that their contributions can bring me closer to them? Beloved church, you will not contribute anything to the welfare of God's work if you have not found the value in God. Uh, if you fast forward a little bit and the peep in the book of first kings solomon has built the temple magnificently the temple stands and to its dedication he offers a prayer beloved when you see solomon's dedicatory prayer therewith you will find the value of that temple Many at times we value the churches in the Adventist church with the eye of physical beauty and magnificence so that when people pass around, they will say, look at how university church looks like. Beloved, it's not about the church structure, but the benefits you get from being part and parcel of that church is what counts among its believers. Solomon says, now that your people have built this structure, when time will come, when crisis will strike among them, I'm just paraphrasing, when your children will be pursued by the enemies, defeated in the battlefield, and they realize and come back to this house and kneel in this house, Lord, hear them from heaven that is the value of the temple when the enemy catches up with them and they sin against you because every human being is prone to sin when they wander from the path of righteousness and the enemy, you know, you know, you know, you know, tumbles them in the mud of sin and they realize and they desire to get reconnected and they come back to the temple, Lord in heaven, hear them and answer their prayers. That is the true, true value of the temple of God. When there shall be a famine in the land, heaven we will not release enough to sustain life. And I call upon your name. Hear them in your temple as they cry. So beloved, a sanctuary is more than a physical place to be with or to be in. But beloved, it's the benefits that we find in the house of the Lord. So oh, God was testing them. Do they find the value in me? The second test was the test of ownership. Tell them to build me a sanctuary. Within that pronouncement, God was testing them. The level of ownership. He wanted to see how they look at possessions. Who is the true owner of what they have? Remember, these were pilgrims. These and were men and women that were coming from bondage. You know, interestingly, when you see how they left Egypt, apparently they left in a haste. There was no time to prepare. There was no time to, you know, um, leave the place ceremoniously. But there's something that God did before they left which is a source of concern and sermon this morning. All roads are leading to freedom. 
They are about to leave. The destroying angel has spared their firstborns. And there's wailing and weeping out there. They are starting off. When you go a little back in Exodus chapter 12, before they left, God did something that warranted him to request for an offering from them. Exodus chapter 12 verse 36 tells us, why did God ask for an offering from people that were not employed? Why did God ask for, for an offering from people that did not have the means? Listen, beloved friends. God cannot ask anything from his people which he himself has not in the first place provided for them. Ah, I don't know whether the church... God doesn't ask from a vacuum. He doesn't ask anyhow. He knows when he means to say. He knows when he means to make a pronouncement. Notice Exodus 12 verse 36. It gives us a clue as to why God had to ask them to bring an offering. Notice verse 36. And who? I, I like response. And who? Who is the subject matter here? The Lord. Tell your neighbor, the Lord. And the Lord had given the people what? Favor. Now, which people are these? These are Israelites. These are pilgrims. These are they that are soon to leave Egypt. They have no means, but yet God, in his infinite wisdom, he sends out a privilege of favor amongst his people to the Egyptians. I mentioned in the morning, the Zambian national soccer team, either it's the, they call them queen, soccer what? Queens. Copa Queens. What do they do when they are going from the dressing room into the stadium. What do they do? Uh -uh, you're not answering me properly. What do they do? Favor. They believe that our football is backed by God somehow. As Israelites were leaving Egypt, beloved, they were favored of God. And in the eyes of the Egyptians, God gave them favor to such an extent that Egyptians did not understand why they had to dig deep into their archives to give to the Israelites things that were to sustain them along the way. If that is clear, say amen. Those that had gold. Brothers and sisters, we know it's a long journey. We want to give you a blessing. Here you are, gold. Those that had linen, here you are. Every form of treasure was given to the Israelites, not because they deserved these things, but because of the word favor. My brother, you are what you are today because of the Lord's word favor. You have been promoted at that job. Everyone else, every other employee applied for that job. They applied for that promotion. But you, because of what? Favor, the Lord elevated you. What do we say this morning? Amen. Your business is doing very well. Whilst every other businessman is complaining, they are complaining, but the Lord, because of his favor, has made your business to tick. But many at times we concentrate on the blessing and we lose sight of the blesser. Now, I'm not talking about the blessers. You know what I'm talking about. He gave them favor. And after giving them favor, beloved, God stood from a distance. I want to see whether they know that this blessing is as a result of my favor. Like any other, they had plans. Wow. 
if we can make use of these merchandise, these blessings, when we get to um, Canaan, um, we shall use these resources, we shall use these materials to begin a new life in a strange land. Many at times we make budgets on the blessings that God has given us. Many at times we hold on to the blessings. I have heard people saying, look, my brother, I cannot help you because this man should reach us up to the month end. Do you have the guarantee that you reach the month end? Favor. Hallelujah, church. A test of ownership. Thirdly, brothers and sisters, God was testing them about their levels of gratitude. They were slaves crying for a deliverer. And when a deliverer came and God favored them, he was watching, will they find value in me as their source of their blessings? You know, when you read Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 7, remember the Lord because it is him that gives you the power to Obtain what? Wealth. Beloved friends, once this was laid down, as Moses was communicating to God's people, God was watching their response, their level of ownership. Because when you think you own, you believe you are the one to administer and decide what to do with what you own. But if you know that you are just a steward and the owner says it, use it this way, you shall just step aside and say, Lord, let your will be done. Beloved, I don't want to waste your time. We worship a God that never changes. He has seen fit that at this church we should have various projects to make sure that the work of God goes forward. And God is waiting from what he has done in your life, for the blessings that he has done in your life. What shall you do? Do you claim ownership so that whatever the church says is the work of God put forward, you shall begin to murmur. I was whispering to the elder, this finishing of the palisade fence, completing of completion of the kitchen and toilet at the campsite, works for the Mount Purpose building. There's a school that the church wants to build. All these works are related to the work of God, and God is standing aside and testing you and me. Will you be part and parcel of this work that God has put you know, you know, forward to us as, as in, through the leadership of the church? Beloved, we are under a constant watch care of God. For the blessings that he has given you, will you be a blessing to his work? Will you be part and parcel of that which God has put forward? Listen to this. I am interested in the response that uh, took place when this pronouncement was made. Remember, murmurers bypass them, grumblers bypass them, those that think their budgets will be disturbed, those that think you know, their programs, their, their, their agenda will be disturbed, leave them, but only those that are willing. And notice there's no quantity that was put there. There was no minimum threshold. It's as the Lord has blessed you, as deep and as far as you appreciate the blessings of the Lord. In chapter 36, works begin. Masons are put in place. Bricklayers and carpenters begin to do their work. People are pouring in in appreciation for what the Lord has done. People are coming. The Bible says in chapter 36, verse 3 and 4, and they received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. So they continued to bring the free will offerings every morning. And all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary 
came each one, you know, from the work that they were doing. In verse 5, the Bible says, They spoke unto Moses, saying, The people are bringing enough. Is that what your Bible says? <laughs> Church, people are bringing enough. What does the Bible say? They are bringing how much? More than enough. For the work and the offering. So the Bible says. The people bring more than enough for the service of the Lord which the Lord had commanded. So Moses gave a command. And caused it to be pronounced throughout the camp. Saying let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were. Ah, you can do better. They were what? Eh? Restrained from bringing. Yeah. Oh, for that flame of living fire which shone so bright. In sense of all which made their souls to heaven aspire, come in distress in day. The songwriter says, Remember, Lord, the ancient days. Beloved, in those days, willing givers are restrained. In our days, unwilling givers are compelled to bring. Ah, you didn't hear me. They need a choir. They need a preacher. They need some comical, dramatic jargons on stage so that they bring. But these remain a testimony. These remain a beacon of light to each one of us living in the last days. That beloved friends, God can do his work even without you and me. His work will finish. And today still stands and says, only those that are willing, they will bring. Because of what they have seen God doing in their lives. Beloved friends, I said in the morning, and I'll say it again. When you seriously rank the priorities of life, and you begin to analyze what is the most important thing in your life today. In the morning, beloved, we were challenged. Number one, what the human being needs as the most urgent thing that you can't live without is what? You know that you can only live three minutes without air. One, two, three. Three minutes without air. Uh-uh, you didn't hear me. I'm saying, how many minutes? Three minutes without air. Before you think about your session or exams, before you think about finishing that flat, before you think about putting tenants in the new flats that you've built, you need air. Uh uh, you didn't hear me. I'm saying you need air to breathe. Without that air, in three minutes you are gone, and nobody will receive the first rentals from those flats because you'll be at Memorial Park. Number one, we need air, urgently. A good supply of air is needed urgently so that, beloved, we can be sustained in our living. Number two, a human being cannot live how long without water? <laughs> yeah. Water. How many days without water? Three days without water. Before you think about, you know, getting promoted, think about water. Hallelujah, church. When you rank life 
in its reality. You need air urgently. You need water. What is priority number three? You need food. Uh uh, you didn't hear me. Before you think about wearing new school shoes or shoes, you need food. And the longest time a human being can live without food is 40 days and 40 nights. After these three, you can now think about where to go, what clothes to wear, and what projects you can do in your life. A friend of mine had a relative sick of some mysterious disease. And they required that they buy pints of oxygen, cylinders, because he was discharged from home. This workmate said, my brother, to keep a human being alive, as a family, we needed to contribute each one per family so much money to keep their cousin alive. And he was saying, my brother, even some family members are saying, up to now he hasn't died. <laughs> Fellow church members, the things, the basic and the most important things that we need before our plans, God has given us for free. Uh -uh, you didn't hear me. You can wear that smart suit. You can wear the expensive dress. But the air that you are breathing, nobody charged you. God gave it to you today. And is watching from a distance. Do they really understand that the basic raw materials of their lives are as a result of my blessing them? And he says, just a small budget to support my work in appreciation of the things that I do for you. Then we begin to grumble. Sad state of affairs. And may God forgive me. Because even the boastful things that we speak, we use whose air? God's air. So, beloved friends, as I conclude into closing, God poses a challenge to each one of us. Like David said in Psalm 116, verse 12, What shall I render unto the Lord for the many blessings he has given me? I look around throughout the year, last year, this year, the Lord saved me. The Lord blessed me abundantly. It's not because of my wisdom. I will surely render unto him in appreciation for the things that he has done for me. Beloved, it's not about coming to sing congregational songs. God is waiting. He's watching. He's testing each one of us whether or not we value. And here is the good news. Every contribution that you make towards God's work is an investment. You never know, beloved, a day of crisis may come. But I want to tell you, you have the right to claim the promises of God because of how you've been a blessing to his work. Hallelujah, church. Amen. As my brother plays the piano, I'm closing now. Faithful. 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 I've met people. But the servant of the Lord is faithful and genuine, at least from my own observation. One day, he came and he said, Brother, things are not okay at work. It's like a cliche of enemies stood against him, falsely accused, even in the things that he was not involved in. And he said, Brother, there's no offense at all. It's because I go early for work, I perform the tasks as required. And I'm so dedicated to the work that I'm given because I work as if I'm working for my Heavenly Father. Committees sat pending dismissal. He said, I know my help doesn't come from money. My help doesn't come from resources of this earth. I'll look to the mountain from whence cometh my help. I will go in the church where I first found my God. I will go to the sanctuary and claim the promises of my Father. I don't know which block is written my name, but Lord, I've been a blessing to your church. He told his wife, Mama, I don't know when I'm going to come back. Don't bring food. 
don't come and check on me. I'm going to my father's house. He went in the evening, cried unto the Lord the entire night. In the morning, cried unto the Lord the whole day, no food. In the evening, cried unto the Lord, no food, no nothing, no blankets, no nothing. Calling upon the name of the Lord. Lord, you promised that each time your children will go into challenges and problems, let them come into the house of the Lord and they will find help. Three days of fasting and prayer. Beloved friends, let's invest in the work of God. Hallelujah, church. Child of God, you are childless in your home. Child of God, your marriage is on the verge of collapsing. Child of God, you are living a life of confusion, temptation, sights and sound. Child of God, the only place to find help is in the house of the Lord. Just at the end of his fasting church, he was caught and told to say, we've done our part and investigations have been concluded. You are innocent and to reward you for this, we're elevating three notches higher. Beloved, build me a sanctuary that I may dwell with you. Life is not a straight line. Ecclesiastes tells us, time to be born. And time to what? Time to plant and time to harvest. Beloved, because we are living in this life, there will be changes, ups and downs. Beloved, celebration and mourning. Life is punctuated with uncertainty. But here is the good news. When you invest and come close to the things of God, one day when you are lonely, one day when confusion and crisis strikes, the Lord will remember every contribution towards the house of the Lord. Will you participate this morning? Will you be part of this great work ahead of us? The Lord stands and the Lord calls upon his people. You are saying in the congregation, brother, I don't know how it happened, but I'm what I am today because of the grace of the Lord. Allow me, child of God, to say thank you to Jesus. It doesn't matter, it's a coin. Whatever you have, brothers and sisters, just because you want to appreciate what the Lord has done for you, that is all that matters. God can do, even with or without a coin. All he's looking for in you is the value that you place upon him. And my prayer this morning is that God's church will find value in the presence of the Lord. My prayer is that God's church will find value in investing their resources into the things that pertain to the kingdom of God. Because the Bible tells us, throw upon the waters, sow your bread upon the waters, for you shall find it again. Hallelujah, somebody. Is there somebody this morning? You want to join hands, you're saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my children. Thank you for your blessings. I'm at school. Everything that I've done in my life, truly I've seen your hand and not mine. And I just come to you to say, thank you. And I value your presence. And I value, and with a heart of gratitude, I come back to you. Is that your prayer this afternoon? If so, you can stand up as we pray together. Oh, for that flame of living fire. God is looking for men and women who will work, not be compelled to, but because with a sense of appreciation, a sense of gratitude, they will come unto him and be part of any work that the church calls upon. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Shall we pray together? That project, Heavenly Father, of building your sanctuary, was not because you didn't have the means. And because we worship a God that doesn't change, you stand aside and watch every member, every congregant of the university church. Do they truly value me? Do they really know that what they are is because of the blessings I've given them? Father, I pray this afternoon with a sense of gratitude we come. Like David we exclaim, what shall I render unto the Lord 
for making me to pass my exams. What shall I render unto the Lord for the children that you have blessed me that are doing very well, getting good grades in their various grades? What shall I render unto you, my Father, for the life that you are giving me, the favor that you have given me at work and everywhere I go? If you are such a one, my brother, the Lord is saying you can be part of this work. We will not ask how much and how further you should go, but as far as the Lord has blessed you, be part of this program. Before you leave, if it requires you to write on a piece of paper, the church targets 500,000 kwacha to meet the demands and the needs of these projects. I know there's a brother, a sister, even single-handedly can be able to meet the needs of God's church. But because we are to work corporately, do not leave this church premises, my brother. Do not leave this church premises, my sister without being part and parcel of thanksgiving to the Lord for what he has done in your life. Should you go through crisis, should you go through pain, as it is inevitable for every human being, this is the place where you meet your heavenly father. You have the insurance cover. You have the backing of your heavenly father. Come here! And lament before him for a child in your marriage. Come here and lament for peace in that family. He will be found of you because that is what he has promised. Thank you, Lord, because we will not fear of tomorrow. Because we know you are with us today. May God bless his church as we continue to appreciate what you have done for us. For this we pray in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let the church say, Amen.